Okay, student, let's see what is there in this question. Kepler's third law relates the orbital time period of the planet around the sun uh, with the orbital radius r. The mass of the sun is capital M. What is the correct algebraic form of the law? Okay, let's see. So in this video, we are going to go into details and I would be giving you 100% uh, derivation for this. So first of all, let us imagine that this is the star or this is the sun and there is this orbit where there is this planet which is moving around. The distance here will be r, it is given. Okay, this mass will be assumed as m, the mass of the sun is assumed as capital M. So we want to find the time period in which it is moving around it. So we can clearly say that the time period from our knowledge from the circular motion is it is equal to the circumference divided by the tangential velocity with which it is moving. So overall, we want to do this 2 pi r divided by v. v is the velocity with which it is moving. That's it. Now the question is, what is this v? So this orbital velocity, you might remember the formula that will be root of gm by r. Or it might be given in the data booklet also, please verify. But in this video, I am going to derive the formula for the orbital velocity also so that things are pretty clear to you like what is happening. Okay, so whenever a body is moving in a circular fashion, it cannot move in a circular motion without the help of a centripetal force. So some or the other force has to act like centripetal. So we know that the gravitational force is acting on it. So it will be given by G capital M into small m divided by R square. This is small m, yeah. So this is the gravitational force which will be acting like centripetal. So centripetal force can be written as mv square by R. Now this comes from our knowledge of circular motion that we have completed in topic A2. So you people can, if you are a member, you people can watch the videos for the circular motion. Or if you're not the member, please watch some questions uh, for paper one from that topic. Things will be clear. So these two forces should be equal to each other. It will become GMM by R square is equal to MV square by R. R and R gets cancelled out. This M and M is getting cancelled out. So GM divided by R is equal to V square. Accordingly, you have the formula in front of you, which is square root of GM by R which can be derived from this point very easily, same formula that we have already written there. So this is the preceding part of the question, like the derivation for the orbital velocity, which was actually not the subject matter of this question, but still I have given, to you, given you that. Now, once we know the time period, we can now find the, uh, sorry, once we know the formula expression for the velocity, we can now find the time period for this. We would be using the formula t is equal to 2 pi r by v. So t is 2 pi r divided by v. Root of gm by r. So it is 2 pi r divided by... Now this is reciprocal is created. So this radius goes to the numerator. It will be multiplied like this in the numerator. Okay. So this can be written as 2 pi r raised to power 1 multiplied by r raised to power half. Anyways, I don't want to go into that much detail. So it will be 2 pi r raised to power 3 by 2 divided by root of gm, which, is, which can be written as gm raised to power 1 by 2. And this is the t. From here, we can find the expression that we are looking forward to. This will be equal to 2 pi r raised to power 1.5 divided by gm raised to power 0 0.5 in the terms of decimals. So a is clearly the correct answer, which is 2 pi r raised to power 1.5 divided by gm raised to power 0 0.5. So clearly a is the correct answer. I hope everything is clear to you. Everything is correct. Let us see what is the answer given in the mark scheme. And yes, the answer given is a. Okay, dear students, so sorry for the background noise. <laughs> All the best. Bye.